Welcome back to Ways to Love Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson, and today our guest is Miss Rosemary Lidoff, and she is a certified reverse mortgage professional, and I can't wait for her to tell you what that's all about. Now, we talk about our show as a money show, a respect for money show, and in this world, a lot of people have questions about what a reverse mortgage is, what it can do, and they have preconceived thoughts and ideas of what it is. Well, she has taken a totally different step in the right direction to make sure you're educated to know if this is the right transition for you as part of your retirement planning. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss this show. Are you ready to upgrade your relationship with money? We created a free cheat sheet to help you discover the seven hidden costs sabotaging your financial success and what you can do about it. Click the link below to get your free copy. Welcome back to Ways to Live Your Money. I'm Elizabeth Dawson. We have a wonderful guest here today, Miss Rosemary uh, Lidoff, and she is a certified uh, reverse mortgage professional, and I can't wait for her to tell you her story. But again, Rosemary, thank you so much for being here. It's an honor to have you, and you know, welcome. Thank you, and thank you for uh, letting me be on your podcast. It's a fabulous, fabulous opportunity for people to learn. Yes, and I think that you have a great story. You know, you have a great story to tell because of the fact that you deal in a world where it comes to reverse mortgage and uh, you have become this this very small percentage of people in your industry have uh, um, have actually attained the certification of where you're at. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Certainly. Um, I started in the world of traditional mortgages more than 20 years ago, and people kept encouraging me to go into the world of reverse. And I kept saying, no, I don't like the rules. I don't like the rules. I don't like how seniors are treated. It's not for me. And about six mm -hmm. years ago, the rules started changing. And there, things were put into place like financial assessment. Um, and that was one of the biggest where you can't just take all the money and run. There's all kinds of rules now. And when I started seeing those guidelines, I said, oh, this now makes sense. It's not a mm -hmm. quick fix. So I went on to become a specialist. And then about a year ago, I had an opportunity to do what about, it's, there's less than 200 now, a, an exam, very intense exam to be what's called a certified reverse mortgage professional, very highly trained in the ethics, the guidelines, the requirements, continuing education all the time. And I feel now when I am in front of the over 60 crowd, I feel competent to be able to advise them correctly. Yes, this makes sense. No, this doesn't make sense for you. I think it's important too, because so many people are concerned about doing a reverse mortgage and maybe there's you know limited information. When we're talking about the whole financial planning portion of a, a client's life, we want to talk about those pieces, but this might be a strategy for people when it comes to retirement planning, but maybe they put it off um, so tell us a little bit about reverse mortgages in general and when it's the right time to consider one for the client that might be or the consumer that might be looking into more education about it. As far as the timing, that can vary. That I've got clients as young as 60 and clients as old as 95. So it's, um, it's when the generally the financial, uh, the financial advisor will call me, tell me about their client tell me that they, they went into retirement, they just don't have the lifestyle they thought. And if only they could get rid of this mortgage payment, that could help. It's also the financial planners that say, my client has plenty in their portfolio. They're gonna be fine till they're 102. But doggone it, they live in a home, they've got all this equity, and they know that that equity really can't be used until that home is sold. This is a way to use that home equity. Um, any, it can sit in the line of credit. Mortgage, if you have a mortgage, you don't have a mortgage. It doesn't make a difference. But that line of credit grows on, a, grows on an annual basis. And it generally is, a, is something that people go into. And they say, oh my goodness, I really need to buy a car. And that's going to be $30,000. I hate to call that financial planner and say, will you please take $30,000 out? I need to buy a car and shrink the financial portfolio, which means it may or may not last as long as was planned. Oh, by the way, we've got all this home equity. Isn't there a way we can use that now? And that's what this product allows people to do. 
And along the years that I've known about real, you know, reverse mortgages and uh, uh, people have brought up questions to myself, and obviously we would align ourselves with someone like you, Rosemary, um, it's, uh, it's, there's some concerns that people have about it, maybe not feeling like they really truly own their home, if they do this, um, if a health event occurs, what are, the, what are the situations that happen there? Most people want to stay in the home, but if they can't, what are some of the rules that have to be considered if you are considering doing a reverse mortgage of some kind? Okay, so uh, unlike a traditional mortgage, values on a home can go up and down. And loan amounts, if you're not, you can choose to make payments on a reverse mortgage or not. If you choose to make payments, the balance will hold. If not, the balance is going up. Well, in theory, and especially in California, your home value is also going up. So now you may get to a point when you're, I've got clients in their 90s, and oh my gosh, they're quote, upside down, meaning that the loan amount exceeds the value. Well, oh my goodness, my heirs are going to have to do that. I'm going to lose the title. The answers are no. You always retain the title. Your heirs do not have to come up with anything of a difference. What happens with a reverse mortgage is it's an FHA product, and there's every year you're accruing into a mortgage insurance fund. That fund pays the bank and makes them whole, should you be upside down. And again, mm -hmm. title stays in your name the whole time. The only requirements on a reverse are you keep your property taxes, your property insurance, and your HOA current. And that's like on any other mortgage. The mortgage, um, the, the benefits of the mortgage are you can choose to make the payment or not. The line of credit grows and it can never be frozen. People in their 60s and 70s say, oh, I'll just get a line of credit. Well, by the way, that line, traditional line of credits can be frozen and there's payments. And the, and it's a recourse loan as opposed to a reverse is called a non-recourse loan because you're literally taking equity. Equity does not show up on a credit. The loan does not show up on a credit report and the money is not taxed. Well, I think it's a wonderful tool. Yeah, I think so. And I think it's a wonderful tool to be able to use as long as people understand what the, the true circumstances of the situation are. I know that we had been talking with um, a family that that uh, you know, mom and dad aren't necessarily as as knowledgeable about these things, but you know, the children are getting involved, and that was kind of a story that we were going through at one point, where you know, the the children were having to subsidize, which happens a lot. We call that that sandwich generation. Um, they're helping a lot to help mom and dad because now income might be static and it might not be growing, and uh, life things might be occurring. So uh, I think that looking at this as a tool is a very important piece to the puzzle. Um, and, you know, from an educational standpoint, I think, uh, you know, maybe for you, Rosemary, it's, it's um, you want to go into an educational process with them, correct? You want to you really dive deep with them just so that they understand the mechanics of how something like this could either help them, benefit them, and also know that that, you know, property tax, the insurance, you know, HOA, if they're, if that's applicable, is still paid. And, you know, even deferred maintenance on the home, those things actually still continue to happen as if you still own that home. We all, you know, you still own that home, which I think is a huge peace of mind. So tell me a little bit about the educational process that you have with your clients um, and even some resources. I know you sent us uh, this piece right here, the benefits of working with a CRMP, which we'll have this as a download for you if you click on the link below. Uh, but it's uh, I think that the educational portion is such a peace of mind for people. If you could tell us a little bit more about how that journey begins, um, starts, and ends. When someone calls me and, and has a person they think might be interested in this, the first thing I do not do is start asking for numbers at all. I want to do what I call a discovery process. Do you like your home? Do you want to stay in your home? How close do you live to your grandchildren? Would you like to see them more often? The idea, what have you heard about reverse mortgages? And who told you that? I go through a very lengthy, probably 20 minute process, literally over the telephone, just chatting about them and their situations. If you took a piece of paper and folded it in half, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, or Mr. and Mrs. Potential Borrower, if you took that piece of paper and you put numbers, uh, income on the right, on the left, and uh, you put your expenses on the right. Is there a, is every month, are you okay? And then, oh, by the way, 
maybe a husband or a wife or somebody falls down the stairs. Now all of a sudden we've got an, a challenge. Maybe you have long-term care and that's fabulous. Maybe you don't. Where is the money going to come from? And oh, by the way, I really want to stay in this house. I do not want to move. How can that happen? And I'll say, well, we, maybe we can make that happen. And we can set up what I call a growing line of credit. So you take this at 60, and by the time you're 80, you need to bring help in the house. There's money there to keep you in that house. You know, there's something else that we've talked about in the past, too. And it was about doing... Um, uh, like when you're, let's say that this couple wants to sell their home and they want to buy into a new home and there's a way you can actually buy into that home with a reverse mortgage too. Could you kind of give, you know, shed some light on that too? Certainly. Um, and, and I want to address something from your prior question. What I see a lot of is children are taking, are helping mom and dad out and say they're in their forties or their fifties. Well, they're blowing up their retirement. I mean, that's a serious hit to their own retirement when mom and dad do have this equity. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to say that. And then you, you had asked about the reverse purchase. How that works is mom and dad have been in this home with six bedrooms, raised their children, has a swimming pool. They're not using all that space anymore. And they really would like to downsize. And they can. They sell the home. And rather than purchasing a new home for cash, because, boy, they're not going off to a community, these folks, they still want to own something. So what they do is they take the they find a three bedroom condo, let's call it, and they put 50 percent down somewhere between 40 and 60 percent, depending on their age. Now they own that condo. They are on title on that new condo. They've stashed money away from the sale of the previous home that can go for expenses that are gonna come along as people age, but they live in that home. Again, no mortgage payment, only paying taxes, insurance, and HOA. It's a fabulous product for people that aren't ready to put on their put on a bathrobe in the morning to have coffee in an independent living place or something. <laughs> in a community well, you know, that, there's so many, especially after this pandemic year now, there's so many people that are, oh my goodness gracious, don't put me in one of those places. How can I not have to maintain this six bedroom house with the swimming pool, but yet not have, and I paid off, how can I move into something else? Well, and I think that's a good point because people think it's only if they own their home, have a large amount of equity you know, the reverse purchase is not something that's been on people's topics. Uh, but again, I think this is also part of the retirement planning process. We're talking about inflation now and in, in all the news and, and basically all these things are going to happen. So a reverse mortgage might be something you might need to get educated about in the future because it may have a big impact on your ability to maintain the lifestyle that you want to have with the income and cash flow that you have coming in for retirement. So this might be a good opportunity for you to, to, to reach out to Rosemary and see how how um, she might be able to help better, you know, educate you on this. And, you know, Rosemary, you're, you're a business owner, you know, and, and this month of March is Women's History Month, you know, basically, um, how did you get your start here in this world? You said you were in the mortgage industry before, but I think you've probably had a very interesting career to get you to this place of independence. And, and um, you know, how have you done it? Um, I literally started at nine years old. I was paying my dad's bills because I liked the sound of tearing that perforated invoice. And then he showed me and I went on and got an accounting degree to fast forward. And I did accounting for about 20 years. Then I said, I gotta get out of here. And I got into an industry where I was running rallies for RVers. And I was responsible for the volunteers and the exhibitors, et cetera. And even when someone's tires got stuck in the mud, they come to me. So I was in that world for a long time of, um, RVs and I went to exciting places like Perry, Georgia and Pomona, California, and people are off doing these fabulous trips. I got to find a place where we can put 12,000 RV people. So oh, then I, I decided, you know what, I, I need to go back to numbers. And I had an associate, um, I became a widow and I had to mm -hmm. figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Now I've got to take care of myself. And I had an associate that ran a mortgage office. And he said, you're very good with marketing. You're very good with accounting. Just come run my office. And I said, well, I'll check it out. Well, fast forward, I saw, oh my gosh, I really like this. So I got into the traditional world. He took care of the desk fee and et cetera, gave me clients. Um, I since 
uh, that was down in Ventura County. I since moved to San Diego and knew I wanted to stay in the world of mortgages. And like I said at the beginning, that I finally made the jump into reverse. And I do that exclusively now and don't even work in the traditional world. I have a partner that does and she'll take care of the, tr the traditional clients. I take care of the reverse. So that's a fast forward of the journey. And by the well, way, there was a grandbaby here. So it was kind of. Oh. So, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the grandbaby. I mean, that's the next stage, right? You get excited about those things. Yeah, of course. Well, grandbaby was three months old when I moved in. A grandbaby is now almost 14 oh, and wow. still coming over and baking and cooking and gardening and doing all the things that I remember doing with a grandmother. And she's oh. doing all those things. Yet. She brings her iPad and, oh, I have this meeting at two o'clock and this at four o'clock and this. I said, that's fine. <laughs> she brings her computer and in between we're doing our baking and gardening and I'm doing things with her that I did that, you know, made me who I am and hopefully the same for her. Oh, my gosh. That's such a blessing, such a gift. You know, not everybody has that ability. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're being a great influence for her, too, you know, uh, uh, a go-getter, uh, an ambitious woman, and also, you know, family and, and grandbabies in your world are very important to you. So I'm, I'm so happy for you. She, she's now my assistant. She comes over and does my shredding and my filing. She, we, when she was younger and she didn't understand what I did, I pulled out a, a, you know, an intake sheet and I said, okay, who's the loan for? She said, my bunny and my bear. And we figured out how to do a loan for the bunny and the bear. And I showed her income requirements and credit, et cetera. So she understands at her level exactly what I do. And, uh, and, I mean, and by the way, it's funding her Etsy business because she started <laughs> a little business on Etsy. So I pay her and she funds her business, which is kind of fun. Oh my gosh. What, what kind of business does she have on Etsy? She makes keychains. So, oh. and she distributes them literally all over the world because we have family and That's friends all over the world. So she's got her little mm -hmm. website and we're funding it by the work she does in my office. So it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's fantastic. Is she starting to make a profit now? A little bit, a little yeah. bit. So it's- Well, you know what? Entrepreneurial women run in your bloodline, it sounds oh, like. Oh, yes. And she's very much um, a lot like I am and, and my son the same way. Uh, mm -hmm. needs versus wants. And mm -hmm. I see that in her, you know, looking at things, this is a need or a want, you know, that kind of thing. I grew up with that philosophy. Of course, taught my son that philosophy. My late husband and I were very concerned about that. He's since gone on and he teaches financial literacy at oh. San Pasquale Academy with the foster kids at Donovan Prison to the inmates. Wow. So financial literacy has always been a huge part of, uh, of my life. And reverse fit into that so well, because yes, it's not for everybody. Uh, someone will come to me and say, gee, I think I'm going to move to North Carolina to be with my grandchildren in two years. I said, well, we're not doing any kind of reverse mortgage. Here. Um, you know, it's got to be long term thinking for people. Sure. Sometimes someone will call and it'll be two years before they call me back. Now we're ready. And that's fine. Well, you must be a very patient lady. <laughs> you brought up something I think that is really important that needs versus wants when it comes to financial, um, you know, planning in your world and what you've done. And, and I think that you were really um, something has become a major priority for you, uh, you know, getting closer to retirement. What, what is that? I think it was not a trick question, but I think it was that saving for retirement was a big priority now. Saving for retirement is a big priority. Absolutely big priority. And uh, I'm one that, you know, right off the, I work on commission because that's what we do. And right off the top goes, you know, 20% of the check just without thinking. So that's for retirement. Um, I became, a, I was a young, I became a very young widow. So I had to figure that whole part out. And um, I decided I do have a date. I, I don't mind saying I'm 72 years old. So I work with people that are of my age and people say, well, when the heck are you going to retire already? Exactly. Yeah. You know, I have no reason or, or date or anything. I absolutely am passionate about what I do. When I'm with a client and we're, we've, you know, the notary's there and I'm there and we've signed the loan documents. 
and they're standing over their gladiolas and they're crying. And I'll walk out and I'll say, what's going on? Oh my goodness, I don't have to leave my garden. No, you don't have to leave your garden. No. And um, it's, it's such a feeling of being able to serve like that and being able to work as I am. I have absolutely no dates for retirement. Well, I think that that's actually probably one of your secrets then, because I have heard that from many people, uh, men and women alike, that if they are doing what they love, retiring is really not something that they need to do to get away from something. And if you're loving it, it's uh, it's an amazing part of the journey. So, um, and, and you know, Rosemary, I'm so sorry that you were a young widow. I uh, I can't uh, I can't imagine, but you know, uh, it's made you into a beautiful woman today. And 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 look at you, you've got your son, you've got your granddaughter. All those things are happening, and you're really changing the lives of so many people out there that really have a a different idea about what reverse mortgages are all about. And I couldn't I couldn't congratulate you more. So uh, we're thankful for you. We're really thankful for you. Thank you. And then uh, as a side note, because I, I figured out at my age, I'm probably not having any more children. I figured that's <laughs> probably not going to happen. So I take myself to the safari park and I'm there uh, at least twice, three times a month being with the children and the animals and the plants. And I tell, I, I'm an information ambassador there. So I literally tell people where to go from all over the world. And uh, wow. it's an outlet that I absolutely love. And how fortunate to have those the zoo and the park in our community. Absolutely. My goodness. You have a lot of energy. I hope when I am at 72 that I have as much energy as you do. <laughs> well, Rosemary, thank you so much for being here today. We're really grateful for, for you spending the time. I know your time is precious. So, uh, you know, thank you. Thank you for this wealth of knowledge. And I'm sure that people are going to want to know more about you to get these questions answered. And, and again, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Well, thank you for the opportunity, because the more that people can learn about this from an educated person, as opposed to just, oh, I did my research on the Internet and they said, you know, um, just call me with those kinds of questions. And it may be true, but I will definitely dig in and find out. Well, well said. Thank you again so much for being here. Again, stay tuned. We'll be right back with the rest of our show. Uh, well, um, you know, Ways to Love Your Money is expanding constantly. So this this uh, wider vision of tools that you can use when you're in your retirement planning for um, for the future or even if it's in the present right now, uh, make sure that you surround yourself with the experts to to answer all those questions. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Have you gotten a copy of our book yet? If you haven't, Wealth by Design is available on our website, Elizabeth with an S, Dawson.com. We'd love for you to get a copy today. I told you you didn't want to miss that show with Miss Rosemary Lidoff. She is an incredible resource of knowledge, especially if reverse mortgage is part of your world. And the fact that she was a widow at a young age, she needed to do some things. She needed to kind of get educated. And boy, she had a history of numbers in her world. And boy, did she take, make it a difference with it now. So we have clients that have questions. We have people that listen to the show that has questions about these things. Please reach out um, and, and uh, let's make sure that she can help you answer those questions. Uh, we do have an audience question here and it's, um, I'm about to retire and I'm worried about being single in retirement. Do you have any advice? Well, first and foremost, you can do it as a single person in retirement. You should be considering all those things. One of the pieces that even Rosemary had said is that once she actually receives income, she takes 20% off and puts it, you know, and sets it aside for retirement. She doesn't even have a retirement deadline that she wants to retire by. I don't know if that's you. I don't know if, if you're thinking that you do want to stop working and go into the next um, stage of your life. But the advice that I would have for you is get financial education now about all your opportunities and all of the situations that you can actually glean on. You know, do do I need benefits um, to support me in a long-term care health event? Do I do I have enough money that's set aside that can create the same amount of income I'm making now in retirement? And, uh, you know, looking at the projections of what that is. I think a big concern I have, and we're hearing a lot about this in the news, but I think it's been ongoing and, and, and only parts of this is, is actually come to the surface, which is called inflation. You know, even if you're making as much as you've been making in retirement or even a little bit less, will it stay up with inflation? 
You know, we also have to stay up with taxes. Taxes are going to be on the rise here. We're told these things. So now is the time more than ever to constantly look at your financial picture. And if we are transitioning into retirement, what do we want that retirement to look like? Most importantly, it should be based on your goals. What do you want to do in retirement? This is a new chapter of life. It's an emotional transfer of energy and knowledge to a different time where you're going to be basically having all this free time on your hands. What are you going to do with that free time? Uh, people would tell me, well, I can only vacation or golf so much, or I can only do this so much, or I can only do this so much. And the answer is true. One of the best things that I could actually ever tell you, if you are thinking about retiring or it's happening any moment now, make sure you have a really big project that can distract you from not working and now going into this next stage. Um, dear friend of mine, when she retired, I said, we're going to need to make sure you're really busy. And, her, and to that point, she remodeled her entire home and it took about six months to a year to complete. And by the time it was done, she wasn't thinking anymore about work. She wasn't thinking about that uh, part of her life and she was basing everything on her goals, dreams and desires. I encourage you to do the same. Now, if you want to have a complimentary consultation with us, as we said at the beginning of the show, please reach out. We will be happy to do that. We'll have a conversation with you. If it's anyone on our show, even Rosemary, if you want to get in touch with her, please reach out. We'll make sure that you get in touch with her. You can always go in the link below to schedule a time to talk, or you can give us a call at 619-640-2622. We really look forward to seeing you soon. And, you know, let's make your goals, dreams, and desires happen. Ways to love your money. How are you going to do it? Ways to live your retirement. How are you going to do it? Let's help you get there. Take care. See you soon. The information provided in this show is for informational and educational purposes only. This show is not investment advice, nor is it intended to address the financial needs of any particular viewer. The opinions expressed on this show are not intended to be an endorsement of any particular investment strategy or service of any other kind. You must make an independent decision regarding investments or strategies mentioned throughout the show. Before acting on information in this show, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular situation and strongly consider seeking advice from a financial advisor.